Hi, I'm Kath from Veg Patch Kitchen Cookery School and today I want to show you that you absolutely can make bread in a slow cooker. So underneath this cloth I've got a dough that I made earlier. It's got 400 grams of bread flour in it, 6 grams of fine sea salt, 2 grams of easy bake, otherwise known as instant or fast action yeast. So a lot less than is normally recommended in that amount of flour. Just two grams of yeast in 400 grams of flour. And then what I've done is I heated 280 grams of whole milk to warm and added that. And then I splashed in a bit more water to get it to the right consistency. And the reason I've used milk is because what I find with my experiments with, with baking bread in a slow cooker is because the slow cooker bakes the bread so slowly, um, if you make a dough with all water, the water uh, dissipates throughout the, the long baking time and you end up with a drier dough than you would normally when you bake a loaf in a conventional oven. And that means that the dough stales faster. So I find that if I make it with milk, the fats prevent that water from, from leaving the dough as quickly and keep it fresh for a little bit longer so I can eat it the next day without it being too stale. So what I did as I mixed this dough and then I did the rounds of stretch and fold and you'll find a video all about how to stretch and fold your dough on my channel and then I left it to rise. So what I'm going to do now then is shape my dough. So let's bring it out into a square, fold it into the middle, bring those bottom out and fold those into the middle, fold up and roll down. And using 400 grams of flour means fit it easily into this slow cooker. And now this slow cooker is the cheapest one available on the UK market. So it was £20, it's a small slow cooker, the smallest size that you can get. I wanted to show that you don't have to have anything fancy to make bread in it. What I've done is I've lined it with baking parchment, cut off any excess so that the lid will fit neatly. If you've got any excess, you can fold it down. And then I've placed the loaf in the middle there. So now this dough will rise as the slow cooker heats up. So I'm not gonna put the fully proof loaf in the slow cooker. It's been shaped, it's going to finish proofing as the slow cooker heats up, okay? So that's key. Normally what you do is you shape a loaf, pop it in a tin, leave it to rise, and then once it's fully risen and proofed, you pop it in the oven. With the slow cooker, you need to, to allow it to do its first rise, shape it for its second rise, that happens inside as it's cooking. So I'm gonna turn it to high, and I'm going to leave it for an hour, and then we'll come back and see what it looks like after an hour of on high in the slow cooker. The slow cooker's been on for an hour now. So let's lift the lid and see what's going on. Just wipe the condensation off the lid there, because that's all the water that's coming out of the dough. And you can see that it's still, you know, sort of uncooked on top. But I can feel down the sides here, it's drier. Okay, so it's starting to cook around the sides. It's risen beautifully. Stick that lid back on. I'm going to leave it for another three quarters of an hour, an hour, and then I'm going to come and look again. We're now two hours into this baking. Can you see the condensation that's formed on the lid? I don't particularly want that to drop back down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lid off carefully and wipe that off if I can. So here we go. There we are. Lovely. Now, can you see, uh, this is dry here. This is still very spongy and needs additional cooking. But all around the edges here, we've got lovely dry loaf. I'm just gonna carefully pick it out for you to see the bottom of this loaf. And I might turn it upside down because you'll see why as I fetch it out now. So that is still very uncooked, it's hot. And that on the top, on the bottom there, is cooked and it's starting to cook to colour. So if I turn the loaf upside down at this point, I'm hoping what will happen is that the top of the loaf will now fully cook 
and start to brown as well. So the lid goes back on. I'm going to leave it for another half an hour and then we'll look again. So you can see the amount of condensation again on the lid. So I'm just going to lift that off carefully and wipe it down. And there's the loaf inside. So if you remember, we flipped it over so that the top was underneath to bake that better. Let's see what's happening now. And there you go. That looks great. I'm just going to get the temperature gauge and check the internal temperature. You can hear it's not going to knock hollow, but it won't knock hollow because it's not been cooked in a conventional way. Um, it's been cooked inside this container the entire time, but you can see the internal temperature is reading well over 90 degrees centigrade. So we know it's fully baked in there. So there you go. The way to get it brown all the way around is to wait for it to be almost cooked on the top and then turn it over and, and cook it on the other side. What you end up with, obviously, is a, a flat loaf on both sides, no domed, no domed top to that. If you kept it in there and baked it for another half an hour, it would have a dome top, but it would be very pale on top, which is also fine. It is cooked, but it's very pale and soft. So it's really up to you what you choose to do at that point, whether you want the dome top on it or you prefer to have all the way around a sort of golden look to the loaf. So I'm going to leave it to cool completely now, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. It's a very soft bread. It is really good that you can actually bake bread in your slow cooker.